All right, guys, let's kick this training off. Um, so today what I want to focus on is really just the last part of the buyer presentation and listing presentation. And that's the part where you go in for the close and for the signature. So I feel like that's the part a lot of people get stuck on is a lot of the buyer presentation, for example, that you guys see up here. It's really just memorizing, um, you know, what these things mean, right? A lot of this is kind of self-explanatory, memorizing the stuff, knowing how to say it, building rapport. And as you do it over and over, you'll get more comfortable with it. But the last part of the appointment is going in for that signature. And I feel that's the part where it requires more confidence. It requires more of the sales skill. It requires more um, finesse and how you say it. So we're going to dive deep into just that part of the consultation. Um, and before I dive deep into that, I want to just explain and, um, you know, remind you guys of why it's important that we get the signature on the buyer consultation. Um, who can tell me, give me some ideas of why that's, that part is important. Why is it important to get the signature? Uh, because if you don't, that, that age, you pretty much lose it. You have a, you have, you have a, you have a pretty much a 40 chance of, of even getting it after. I think there's like a statistic where you leave without the signature, you're most likely you have like a 70% chance of losing it already. Got it. So Carlos said, if you leave without the signature, you have a big chance of losing that client. Um, anybody else? Anybody else tell me why it's important for the it buyer? Just gives them like um, a sense the buyer of... Uh, buyer. Oh, oh. Buyer. Gives them in the sense of uh, like commitment. Commitment. Committed to you, um, even though realistically, like you tell them in there, like, you're not really committed to doing anything that you don't want to. Correct. Sense of commitment, right? It gives a sense of commitment. It shows commitment from the client that they want to move forward and work with you. Even though there's a cancellation guarantee, even though um, really if someone signs this and then they go do business with someone else, we're not necessarily going to go sue them or anything like that because we're not in the business for, of doing that. But what we're trying to do by getting the signatures, we're trying to weed out the people who just aren't committed and are not serious, right? Uh, especially on the buyer side, guys, where the buyers require a lot of time, energy, and effort because you're showing homes, you're doing all these things, right? And nothing is set in stone until you actually get the contract accepted, right? And even then you still got to go through escrow and all that stuff. Whereas with the seller, when you work with the seller, you're getting that listing agreement signed up front before you do anything, right? And so I want you guys to have the same mindset around working with buyers and sellers is treat them the same. Just like you would sign a listing with, for a seller, treat the buyers that way as well. You're signing buyers. And what that does is that's just one step closer of getting them to the finish line. Um, I know in my experience, I've worked with buyers before. And before we would used to do this process of signing buyers is I would work with buyers. I would just assume that they were going to work with me because we hit it off. It was a good conversation. We went and looked at some homes. We may have even submitted offers on properties. And then there's been times when later on, I find out that they were talking to another agent or they went and wrote an offer with another agent or they met someone at an open house and you get that call. Hey, Enrique, uh, we just want to let you know we just got our offer accepted on another property. And here I am already spent like a month with them, right? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid that, right? Because in our market right now, it's, it's tough to get clients in contract, right? It's tough to get buyers in contract. It's really competitive. You're doing a lot of work. So do yourself the favor as a business person, as a business decision by doing more of this work up front so that you can prevent more of those other circumstances in the future. And so what goes through a lot of people's mind, because not everyone is getting these signed, right? So why do you guys think a lot of agents avoid trying to get these signed with buyers? Okay, so you've heard from other agents that um, when you go for the signature, the buyer sometimes can feel pressured and 
and kind of pull back a little bit. Okay. Yeah, a lot of first time home buyer they don't want commitment because they don't know if they want to buy a house yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we meet them too early, the early process, they just be like, oh, you know, I, I was still searching around. Uh, okay. And then we'll let you know. Okay. okay. So you're feeling that um, the buyers, if they're early on in the process, they may not want to make a commitment yet because they're not sure if they want to buy 100%. Okay. And those are all valid arguments, right? Like people don't want to feel pressured and stuff like that. So I think the key point is it's really in how you deliver it. And then there's also something that's built into this called risk reversal. Do you guys know what risk reversal is? Who wants to guess what risk reversal means? You can get out of so out of it. so in sales right risk reversal is basically i see a risk over here and then so as a sales tactic or as a sales strategy you provide something that reverses that risk or gives them uh puts that risk at basically at ease right so that's what we do in both of our agreements our listing agreement and our buyer agreement is we have what's called the cancellation guarantee so the cancellation guarantee is meant to avoid those two things that you guys just brought up, right? Where I don't want to feel pressured because really, why don't people want to feel pressured to commit to someone? What would be the reasons why someone wouldn't want to commit or feel pressured? Because there's probably something better out there. <laughs> yeah, probably something better out there, right? Like if I commit to you and then what if I'm not happy with your service, right? And then I committed to you and then I avoid going with someone else. That's really what it is at the end of the day, right? If we get to the root of the issue, people don't want to commit because um, there's no guarantee, right? And there, you know, there's no guarantee in the future of what might happen, but that's with anything in life, right? You don't know if tomorrow's guaranteed, right? Uh, or today is guaranteed. So it's important that when you guys are going over this part of the agreement that you present it in a way that is not such a big deal, right? Because the way you say it and the way you explain it can influence how they feel as well, right? If you make this like so formal where you're like reading a contract and you're just like the way you're saying it sounds extremely formal and like this big giant thing, then that's gonna put more pressure on them and make people pull back even more. But if you make it seem like, hey, this is business as usual. This is just part of the process. This is what we do every day. It's not a big deal. And hey, by the way, if you're not happy, you can cancel anytime then what I'm doing is I'm putting them at ease by how I deliver the message. And I'm also taking away the risk by saying you can cancel any time because there's a cancellation guarantee. And that's called a risk reversal. Because if I said, hey, um, Gio, I want you to come join this business with me, right? Um, you're gonna have to invest some money, but you're gonna make a lot of money, man. Like you're gonna make a lot of money. And if you don't make any money, then I'll give you all your money back and I'll even pay you for your time. Would you do it? I would do it. You would do it, right? As long as it was legal, ethical, and right, whatever it might be. But if I was like, hey, Gio, I want you to join this business venture with me. You got to invest 10,000 bucks of your money. You have to work all these hours. We can make a whole lot of money, man, but it's not guaranteed. <laughs> then you're going to think twice. <laughs> Sounds like real estate, right? <laughs> you're going to think twice, right? But by me adding in the hey, I'm going to put a guarantee in there. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to give you your money back. And I'm also going to give you a bunch of bonuses if you sign up today. And I'm also going to do all these other things. Then he was like, yeah, I'd do it. Right. So that's the same concept, guys, of when you're trying to pitch these things, right, is you need to just frame it in a way and say it in a way where it puts them at ease. Right. So why am I spending time on this part? Because the mindset, if you don't have the right mindset before you go into this, then you're going to bomb it when you try to present it. Right. Same thing goes for this. Same thing goes for the listing presentation. It's the same exact mindset and concept. Okay, cool. Any questions? All right. Let me show you how I present this thing. And what I want you guys to take note of, and whether you're practicing the buyer presentation or the listing presentation, I want you to take note of some of the fundamentals of how I present it. My voice, my tonality, how I word it. Um, do I, am I making it sound formal, not formal, all those different things, because those apply to whatever presentation you're doing. So first, what I always like to do, actually, let me just role play. Uh, Gio, you want to be a role play partner? Okay, I'm just going to talk to you. So, um, so this is assuming we already went through, through the whole buyer uh, presentation, the buyer process. I've already laughed with Gio. I've already asked him what's important to him. I've already built credibility. I showed him our review. So you got to also understand that the stage has already been set. So when I'm going in for this last part, 
if I did all of that stuff correct in the beginning, then the ask at the end, if I delivered enough value at the end, then the ask, when I'm asking him for a commitment, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. But if I didn't deliver enough value in the actual presentation, if I didn't connect with them, if I didn't build rapport, if I didn't make them laugh, if I didn't get them to put their guard down, if I didn't ask the right questions, then now when I'm asking for him to commit, he's going to be reluctant. So a lot of times when agents don't get that signature at the end, it's because they haven't built enough rapport in the beginning, right? So it should be like build massive rapport, deliver massive value, really ask questions, really get to understand the client. So at the end, they like can't help, but just want to move forward with you, right? So we're going to assume that I did that, right? Because that's what you guys should all do. And now I'm just going in for the last part. Uh, okay, Gio. So um, I'm going to transition right from the loan process. Okay, Gio, we just went over the loan process. Right. And the next thing we're going to go over in my presentation is going to be our VIP loyalty program. I'm super excited to present this part to you because I think this is there's a lot of value in it for you as a first time home buyer. So, uh, Gio, when you work with us, we're a little bit different from other agents and where we like to actually give you become your VIP buyer specialist. And when we become your VIP buyer specialist, what we're going to do is a few things that I'm going to go over right now. So number one is I'm going to help you get the best financing out there. And how am I going to do that is I work with my in-house loan officer. I also have other loan officers that I know outside of our office. And so what we're going to do is we're going to work with you to make sure you get in contact with them, make sure they shop around for the best deal, go all over all the loan programs and make sure you save the most money and get the best deal on your loan program. Does that make sense to you? Awesome. Awesome. Um, and then what we're going to do after that is we're going to also make sure we find you the right home in the quickest amount of time. And we're going to be able to do that by looking at both properties that are on the market and properties that are off market as well. So on the market would be like everything that's on the MLS, things you see on Zillow, things you see on Redfin, those things that you're probably searching for already. Um, but there's a whole list of properties that are coming up for sale that most clients don't know about. And us as agents, we're well connected. We talk to other listing agents. We know about these properties coming up. So I'm going to make sure you get access to some of those so that we can try to maybe get you into one of those properties, give you some more options and avoid some competition. Do you see, Gio, how that would help you, you know, get a property a lot faster? Yeah, yeah I do see that. Okay, awesome, awesome. And then, so what we're also going to do is I want to make sure that if you're out there and you happen to drive by a property or you happen to go to maybe like a new build or something like that, uh, or let's say you see a random sign on the side of the road that says, hey, property for sale. Now that I'm your specialist, you can just, send me a screenshot, text that over to me, and I'll stop what I'm doing to go figure out what's going on with that property. So now we're taking out all the guesswork from you. I'm going to save you time and energy. You send that over to me, leave it up to me to go out and find you the best property out there, right? And see what those things are all about. Um, we're also going to go over the best strategy for making an offer. So let's, once we find the property that we're looking for, we're going to make sure we go through all the pros and cons of that property. We're going to see, you know, what's the best offer. I'm going to contact the listing agent. I'm going to do all my homework so that we make sure we get you the best deal possible on this property. And what we don't want to do is we don't want you to overpay or commit to any terms that really aren't the best for you. So I'm going to ensure that that doesn't happen. Does that sound fair, Gio? Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Do you have any questions so far on any of these, um, these bullet points? Uh, no, everything's pretty straightforward. Okay, great. And so once we prepare that, prepare that offer, it's my job to go out there and present it to the listing agent to win them over. I'm going to use all my skills, my charm, my beautiful smile, cha -ching, right? Um, and I'm going to make sure that we get our foot in the door and win that listing agent over so that we can get your offer accepted as quick as possible. Because remember what we talked about earlier is that prices are going up. Mm -hmm. So the quicker that I can make this happen for you, the more money you save in the long run, right? Right. Okay, perfect. And then um, a couple other things that we have is we have a ton of vendors because we've been doing this for over 20 years. We got a lot of vendors in our back pocket. So like if you ever need an attorney, if you ever need uh, a CPA, if you need contractors, if you need insurance, anything you need on the property, I have a whole list of preferred vendors that will give you discounted pricing, that will give you a better service. And I can refer you to those people when the time comes up. Does that sound good? Okay, great. And last but not least, uh, Gio, I want to make sure, like I told you earlier, we have over 600 five-star reviews. I want to make sure you're number 601, right? So I'm going to do everything that I can in my power to keep you updated, to give you the best service so that you uh, undoubtedly want to leave me a, a five-star review on Zillow, right? So that's my job, right? And if I'm not doing that, you got to let me know. Sound fair, Gio? Okay, great. 
Um, okay, and that's not it's not over yet. I know I gave you a lot of stuff, and maybe we could stop right there. But there's a couple bonuses that you're gonna get when you work with me. Um, so I'm gonna go through those really quick. So bonus number one is when you work with us, we're a little bit different from other agents. Is we're gonna provide a one year home warranty, and basically what this is, it's a it's an insurance policy on the property, and it covers things like appliances, uh, plumbing issues. Anything that can go wrong with the property in the first year, it's basically an insurance plan that will cover some of those things in case something goes wrong. So for example, let's say like you buy the property and then you go turn on the dishwasher and it doesn't work. Well, this insurance will kick in. You pay a small deductible. They'll come out and fix it. And if they can't fix it, they'll even replace it for you. How good is that, Gio? Okay. Um, did anybody ever, any other realtors you talked to offer that? No. Okay. Tell me anything about that. Yeah, most of them don't, man. It's, it's, but it's the way we do business. Um, and here's the other thing. What I told you before, right? I want to make sure I'm giving you that five-star service. So if at any time you do not feel like I'm living up to this promise, if you just have doubts, give me a call and let's try to work it out. But if we can't work it out, like you can literally fire me at any time, right? So that's the other guarantee that you have is I'm going to work for you for free. I don't get paid until we actually close the deal. And you can fire me at any time if you're not happy with my service. I want to make sure you pick the right realtor. Um, a couple other bonuses is our sell for free guarantee. And that basically means like if you're not happy with your home in the first year, so you live there in the first 12 months, let's say you just hate it. It's the wrong home, the wrong neighborhood. We will sell that home for you and get it off your hands. And we're going to waive the listing part of the commission. Right. So we'll help you find another replacement home, but we won't charge you to sell this current home that you're in. If for some reason you're just not satisfied with the property. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Okay. And uh, last but not least, the best thing about this whole entire uh, bonuses that you get is you don't pay me any commission. Right. Cause I, you were probably thinking like how much you have to pay me for all this. Right. Yeah. You actually don't pay us anything. Uh, the listing agent is the one that pays us. So we negotiate commissions with the listing agent on our behalf. And they're the ones that pay us uh, through our cooperation on the MLS. So great thing is we work for you. We do all these awesome things and you don't pay us. Um, we do have an internal uh, admin fee that gets rolled into your closing costs. So at the end, you'll see like your loan officer will send you a whole list of closing costs. That's $9.95. That covers some of the internal processing of your documents and stuff like that. You don't pay anything up front. That's only when you close a deal. It's part of your closing costs. And like I said, you're never going to be obligated to buy a property. I want to make sure you're extremely happy with the property. And uh, once we find that right one, we're going to do everything that we can to make it happen. Does that sound fair, Gio? It does. Okay, great. So what I want to do now is I know we already got you pre-approved. Uh, I know you're pretty much ready to look at home. So I got some time this weekend. I'm going to pull up my calendar right now. So I'll go pull up my calendar. Um, and what day works good for you uh, to go look at homes this weekend? Oh, we do Saturday. Saturday? Okay. Afternoon or mornings or what we say? Afternoon. Okay. So we'll pencil something in for the afternoon. I'll pull up a list of properties in the meantime. And then what we need to do just to move the relationship forward, I just need you to go ahead and uh, sign right here. And this is just saying that we're working together. Like I said, you can cancel anytime. So here you go, Gio. Uh, you can go ahead and sign right here. Just put your signature on the bottom. Great. Signed it. Or if I'm on, if I'm on Zoom, hey, Gio, if you go ahead and pull up your email, actually sent over a DocuSign and all you got to do is just go ahead and click. And that just means that, Hey, you want me to start working for you? Um, and we'll get the ball rolling and we'll go see some homes on Saturday. Sound fair. How do you, um, how do you send everything? Do you have it like pulled up and ready to send out? We're still in role play. Okay. Um, sound fair, Gio? It sounds, yeah. Sounds okay. Fair. So did you, did you sign it? Yeah. Okay. Um, or do you have an objection right now would be a time to throw me an objection if you, if you have one, cause that sometimes comes up, right? Do you have any objections? Uh, where it says uh, conditions apply, what, what, are, what are those conditions if I want to sell my homes? That just basically means like if you're just like trying to flip a property, right? And this is, you're doing this as a more of a business move. You buy a home and then you fix it and you want to flip it. Like we can't do that for free. This is, but this is more like you're going to live there. And if you're not happy with the home and you're just like, Henrique, I hate this home. I wish I never lived here. I'm going to help you get that off your hands and not pay all these costs, right? Because in a year, you may not have made enough equity to cover the cost of selling your home. So I'm going to help you with that. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So bottom line is we want to make sure you don't get a, get stuck with the home that you're not happy with. Um, any other questions? Do I have to pay that 995 admin fee? That's a great question. That's honestly just part of our process. That's the way we work. Like I said, we offer so many bonuses and value. It's just part of our process that covers the internal processing of your loan docs. 
And the good thing is you don't pay anything up front. It's all just rolled into your closing costs. And we'll even see if we can get the seller to pay for some of those when we negotiate your offer. Okay. Cool. All right, great. All right, just go ahead and sign right there. Cool. All right, and the role play. <laughs> um, so I want your guys' observation. What did you guys notice about? And mind you, I haven't done this in a long time. This was just all. I mean, I, I, because I, I interviewed a lot of the agents, and it's really good. But one of my things was, it's, it's not a big deal, right? It's just not a big. He's going over it, highlighting the value. This is not. It's not. It's not a big deal. He's just having a conversation with you, and he's, you know, along the way, he's asking if you understand, if you agree, if you have any questions. Yeah. Right. So there's no objections when it gets down to signing, because he's already asked you throughout the process of going over the document. Great observation. Thank not a big deal. That. Pretty laid back. Yeah, pretty laid back, pretty chill. Especially explaining, like, oh, it's all part of the process. A lot of time, I, ha I have trouble explaining that. Oh, the admin, CSAN, and USB, and I have a hard time to explain yeah. it. But for from hearing from you, it's just like, oh, it's not really serious. We can actually uh, negotiate and help you with the document. How many of you guys that have done this before were actually like making it harder? I like. <laughs> Where you make it harder by maybe like trying to over explain stuff. I yeah. I try to keep it really simple, right? And I didn't even read like the whole entire line for line. I just summarized what that line was, right? So like in the beginning, help secure the best financing program. All I just said is, hey, basically what this means, I'm going to help you find the best deal on the loan, right? And then I went into a couple details of how I do that. But it, it was more me presenting and not talking. So if, if you're having trouble remembering, right, what you also, what you got to do, this is a, a tip for when you're presenting is just look at the first few uh, lines, right? The first few words. Okay. Financing. Boom. I'm going to help you find the best financing. And then just explain that in your own words, instead of help you secure the best financing for your situation with the lowest rate and the least, right. Then you sound like a robot, right? That's not what you want to do. That's not how you present. So you always want to just look at the bullet point and then say it in your own terms, with your own personality, highlight certain things, right? Um, because that's the way your brain works, right? Your brain works by you explaining in your own voice in your own way. Whoever wrote this, which is me, I wrote it in my voice, right? Not in yours. So you got to say it in your voice, right? But just still hit the points. Um, what else did you guys notice? One big thing that, that I noticed is his tonality, right? Because what I'm, what I'm saying with some of the agents when they're rehearsing this with me or practicing with me, is their tonality gets nervous when they got to go from the 895. It's like, like the commission, you know, like when you're doing a listing presentation, you got to present commission, what, you know, what you're going to be charging to the seller. Yep. Like your voice kind of changes a little bit. It's the same concept what I see with that 895, 995, where I like the tonality where you emphasize like some of the highlights and then you're just very, very calm throughout the process of explaining just the, uh, the 995 or 895, whatever is there. Right? I, Absolutely. Think, I think it's important to understand that tonality. And then the other thing that, that uh, Jess, Tatiana? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to mention that I noticed, like, kind of go off with what Jason said, a very calm tone while you're reading the whole thing. So it makes it seem like all of this is not a big deal to you, that this is what they're going to uh, expect from you because that's how you earn their business. And it's not a big deal. It's effortless. Absolutely. Good observation. And to touch on that, there's a big difference between explaining it in a way where you're kind of asking for their permission versus more telling them this is how we do it this is our process right and saying that with confidence so when you present this you got to basically own it that this is our process this is how we do it because the other person has to believe that you believe yourself if they can tell you don't believe yourself then why would they believe you, right if you're saying it more like hey is it okay if we do these bonuses no like hey guys this is the way we do it right this is the way our team, our team's different from other teams. This is what makes us successful. We have these three awesome bonuses that I'm going to go over with you, right? So I need to say that in an enthusiastic way, a positive way. My tonality needs to be, you know, up there so that they get excited about what we're about to offer them, right? If I'm not excited, how do we expect them to be excited? So some of you guys have no problem getting excited because you guys can just channel that. Some of you guys are a little more quiet and a little bit more reserved, right? So... Let me just practice one thing, um, this one line. I'm just going to go around the room real quick, right? Excitement, right? So, hey, Gio, uh, next we're going to go over the three bonuses you get, man. I'm excited to go over these with you. And these are bonuses that make us unique. This makes us different from every other realtor out there.
but now I want someone to say that in your own words, all right? Who wants to try? With some excitement. Basically, just tell me you're going to go over the bonuses, and this is what makes you different. That's all you're going to do. Andre. Uh, hey, Enrique. So I'm going to go over the bonuses of working with PRG. Uh, let me go ahead and play. Did he, but did, did he believe himself? Was he excited about it? I, I, I don't know. Right? You want to try again? Yeah. It's like, hey, hey Ricky, I'm super excited to go over with you. You know, some of the some of the great things that my team offers. You know, this is what separates us from from the competition in other real estate companies. You know, we have a VIP loyalty bonus program, and this is what it entails. There you go. All right, Andre, try one more time. All right. Uh, hey, Ricky, I'm super excited to tell you about the uh, different bonuses that are uh, offered here at PRT, and the, the good reasons that. Uh, that no, I don't want to it. <laughs> okay, so Andre, say it, say it, and just how you would say it, bro. Like I said it the way I said it. Say it in your own words, right? Right. Just, just tell. I mean, even if you want to simplify it and say less words, right? Uh, so here's some of the VIP bonuses. Uh, just what we offer that many other companies don't. Uh, other brokerages. And so let me go ahead and get you uh, some information about that. Cool. A lot better, right? You simplified it and you made it your own. And that's a lot better. I know I say a lot of words. That's just how I talk, right? I'm, I'm wordy. I do this for a living. I present a lot. So I'm used to, you know, putting a lot of words and all that stuff in it. Some of you guys maybe aren't at that level or naturally you're not like that. So just say it how you would normally say it, even if it's less words, but say it in an enthusiastic way, right? Tatiana, let's go. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm excited to share about you the VIP bonuses that you get while working with us. And you might notice that uh, not a lot of these um, are out there. So I'm really excited to, to show you everything that we do. Cool. That was good. Good first try. Let's go. Let's go. Who else? Go around the room real quick. Hey, Enrique. So we're not done yet. I just want to show you what we all also offer in our firm, which separates us from any other firm. It's our VIP bonuses. So we can, I, I can go over uh, VIP bonuses with you. Cool. All right. Let's go. Go over them with me. All right. <laughs> Who else? Who else wants to try? Sida. Right, right. Zach. Me? Who's that? Sida. I'm calling. I'm calling on you. Okay. Um... So wait. So if you were excited, so there's another thing. If you were excited, how would you sit? Where would your hands be? All right. <laughs> would you be? Forward, would you be back? Would your hands be open? Would you be using your hands? Right, would your chest be out? So that's the other thing too, is physically, the way you're sitting, the way you're standing, that makes a difference in how you project your voice. When you're hunched over, your diaphragm and all that closes, your voice is lower, right? When you're open like this, your chest is out, just putting your chest out and just standing up straight is gonna make your voice project more, which will make you sound louder and more excited, right? Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest, right? So Sida, how would you, sit or stand if you were about to tell me something exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hey Enrique, so now we're not we're not done yet, but we're almost done. I want to go in with the one of the fun parts. It's the VIP loyalty bonuses that our team offers. Um you may not see the this um these bonuses in other teams, but I would like to go over them with you. Cool. All right. Let's go. Stop. You're up. Hey Enrique, so uh before I let you go, I'm just gonna go over a few bonuses that our team offers. Oh, I'm gonna stop you. How would you how would you sit or stand if you were excited? Right now you're leaning in, right? So I don't know if you realize that, but your yeah. your your voice is getting lower, right? Right. Hi Enrique. So before I let you go, I just want to go over a few bonuses that you get by working with our team. And we might not see these videos. Cool. All right. Good enough. Carlos. Hey Enrique. Um also want to extend to you um uh, something that we offer here at our team. Which is the uh, VIP loyalty bonuses, which are exclusive to you while working with us. All right, let's go, let's go, Terrence. Enrique, I just wanted to go over. Oh. Don't, don't, don't lean on the desk, man. Don't lean on the desk. Enrique, I just want to go back. over a few uh, VIP loyalty bonuses that we offer here at PRG that you might not find with uh, other teams. And uh, yeah, I'd love to go over them with you. Cool. All right, let's go. Cisco, let's go. Really excited to finally show you that cool bunch that we offer here at Very Um, we call them the actual oyster bunches. Really excited to show you. Cool. There you go. Geo. Hey, Enrique, I'm super excited to start working with you. But before we do that, 
I want to share with you exactly some of the bonuses that I provide to my VIP clients. Let's get into it. Let's go. <laughs> Anna, how would you say it? Um, I usually say, I know I can't even see. I usually say. You don't need to see. Just all you know is I'm just, hey, I'm going to tell you about our VIP bonuses. Yeah. But say it ex excited, um, right? Hey, Enrique, you actually uh, get a few bonuses for deciding to work with my team and I. Let me go over that. There you go. Boom. Right. Not that hard, but I want, but I want you guys to pay attention to the difference, right? When you're just hunched over, leaning over, you're not that excited. You can't expect the other person to get excited. So there's something called the transfer of energy, the tr transfer of enthusiasm, right? When you're excited and you're smiling, the other person can't help but smile back and be excited as well, unless they're like a robot or something, right? But for the most part, right? If you smile at someone and you talk like, excited they're gonna naturally get a little more excited you're just transferring that energy same thing is if you're like if you're down and out and you're bringing that into the conversation you're gonna bring them down a little bit have you ever had a conversation and you left and you're like damn that person was just kind of down and out right <laughs> right or have you ever opposite have you ever had a conversation where you're someone and you're like that guy's pretty cool man that guy's always freaking excited right now who would you want to work with to go help you find your dream home the guy that's excited, the guy that's leading the conversation, the guy that's ready to go, that's ready to deliver the bonuses, all those different things, or the lady, right? The lady who's doing that. So you need to channel that energy. That is really what this whole thing is all about. It's not about memorizing line for line, right? Because you can memorize it and not say it the right way and not get them excited. Um, the whole 8 9, 995 thing, do you notice how I just made it not a big deal, right? I said, and I, before that, I said, the great thing is you don't pay us any commission, right? You don't pay us any commission. We negotiate all that with the, uh, with the seller. The listing agent pays us. Uh, the only fee or closing cost that you have when you work with our team is a 995. That gets rolled into your closing costs. Yada, yada, yada. Not a big deal. Blah, blah, blah. That's basically what I'm saying, right? 995 covers some internal processing of your documents. You'll get a statement from your loan officer that breaks that all down with your closing costs for the loan and this 995. Boom. Next, right? And I just move forward. Don't already assume they have an objection. If they have an objection, they'll let you know, right? So you just got to act like I do this every day. I've done this a million times. This is my process. Let's make it happen. The other thing I want you guys to take into uh, to account here is that as I'm explaining each thing, I am, did you see like throughout it, I would ask, hey, do you see how that would benefit you? Does that sound fair? Does that sound like a good idea, right? So what I'm doing is by the time I got to the end, he already said yes two or three times. He already agreed with me or nodded or said yes. So then when I go to the, to the excited part of, hey, let's go look at some property, all you got to do is just sign here. This just means that we're now working together and I'm going to start finding properties for you. Go ahead and sign right here. Not a big deal. And that technique works when you're doing the listing presentation. Same thing with the listing presentation. Same technique you using buyer and then a lot of talking about it. Yeah. So he does like, okay, go it's the same exact thing. So let's see, uh, what are we doing on time? We got 20 minutes. I'm gonna run through the listing presentation part. And I'm gonna, I want you to see how I apply the same fundamentals to that part of the listing presentation. Okay. So what I'm gonna go through is, I'll just start right here. So in this listing presentation to set the stage, we've already built rapport. We've already walked the property. We already went over what's important to them, why they want to sell. So we're like basically down to the end where we're trying to get them to close. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, get them to choose their level of service, right? So these are the different options. So I'm going to show you my technique for doing that. And so uh, Gio, you could be my, my role play partner again. So Gio, um, I'm really excited to get to this next part because this is really how we help you get top dollar for your home. So we have different service options that we can customize to your particular situation. And we make them simple for you to uh, look at. There's a silver, there's a gold, and there's a platinum. Basically what silver does is silver is for the more properties that are just kind of as is. You don't want to put a lot of effort. You want to just get it on the market and you don't want to really do a lot to it to get it you know, to top dollar condition. That's fine. Um, that fits some people. And so what that is going to cover is we're going to get your home on the MLS. Okay. It'll go on Zillow and Trulia and all those different websites. We're going to do an open house on your property. We'll bring our stager out here and they'll give you some recommendations of what maybe what you can do with your own furniture. Um, 
And then we're also going to uh, invite some local brokers and tell them about the property. We'll do professional photos. And then we'll also make sure it goes out to all the brokers out there. So everyone knows your property's for sale. And that is offered at 5% uh, commission. The next side of it is going to be the gold service, right? That's the middle plan. And the gold service is for people who see the value in doing more marketing and doing staging and stuff like that on their property. So you'll get everything from the silver. Plus, we're going to do a custom video on your property. We're going to do a custom website. We're going to do a virtual tour. We're going to actually cover the cost of luxury staging for you. So you don't have to worry about that. We'll do social media campaigns where all our whole team markets the property on social media. It'll go to the top agent network, which is the top 10% of agents out there. So it's going to the agents who actually sell homes. Um, we'll do some international marketing through our, bro our brokerage EXP, where all the people in EXP will find out there's over 90,000 agents in there. And then we'll also door knock the whole entire area um, to make sure that every single neighbor knows that your property is for sale. That package is offered at 6%. And then the last package that we have is the platinum. This is for people who want all the bells and whistles and also see the value in doing some upgrades and repairs to their property so that they can truly, truly get top dollar for their home. So you're going to get everything from silver, everything from gold. In addition, we'll do what's called a hands-free home upgrade where we bring our contractors out. We'll do an interior design consultation. We'll give you a whole list of what we recommend you do to the property. And then we can actually do the work for you. Our contractors will do the work, whether we want to paint, flooring, landscaping, different things like that. Um, we'll also do a house cleaning and a carpet cleaning if necessary. And the great thing is that you don't pay for any of these costs until you sell your home. So essentially, we'll do the work up front. We sell your home, and then that's when you pay for those costs. But you're going to sell it for a lot more than just like the as-is uh, program. And that one's offered at 7%. Now, 5, 6, and 7, I know those numbers may not mean a lot. So really, which service plan is going to net you the most money possible? So what I did is I actually... We did our research on the property and I came up with three different net sheets. And then, so I'll show them, I have the net sheets already up here. And then I'll, I'm also, I'm gonna have them printed out basically like this. So if you were to just basically do, here we go. The silver plan, this is more as is. Yeah, the commission's at 5%, but, but your home will probably sell for around a million bucks which means at the end of the day, you're gonna net 940,000 roughly on your property. And this is the, uh, the silver one right here. So I wrote silver on here. I printed the net sheet out. I highlighted it. There you go, Geo, go ahead and take a look at that. So that one, you're going to net about 940000 on the sale of your home, right? And that's if you went with, uh, if we didn't do anything in your property, just really just sold it as is and put it on the market. Now, the next step up is if you went with the gold option, and that's where we start doing some more marketing. We do the staging for you. Uh, we do all this uh, additional marketing as well. And this is the gold here. And you would net about a million seventy. That's how much you would walk away with in your pocket. About a million seventy at the 6% gold option. Um, okay. And then the last but not least, this is if we really did all the bells and whistles. I put an estimate of about 30000 worth of repairs just based off what I saw here from the property. And that's us maybe sprucing up the outside, the inside, maybe touching up the landscaping, having our team come in here and do all of that. And that's the platinum option. But I want you to see how much you net on the platinum option right here. And then keep in mind, guys, side note is I highlighted it and I'll put like a star next to it, right? Like you want to like circle it, make this one look better than all the other ones because it is. Um, so that one, you're going to net about 1167000 on the property. So, Gio, the, out of the three options, the silver, the gold, and the platinum, which one uh, is more in line with how much you want to net? So you're telling me if I go with the platinum option, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be netting between the five percent to the seven percent, almost two hundred thousand more. Correct. Well, I mean that definitely sounds better to me. Right? Yeah, and the reason why is like I said before, is because it includes more marketing, and this is us now renovating your property, making sure that everything is dialed in. So when the buyers walk in, they're just wowed with the property. It's staged, it's clean. It has all the renovations done. Like there's nothing that they're like looking at saying, oh, I got to fix this or that, right? We're going to cover all that stuff, right? So this is an estimate roughly of what you would net by us doing all the bells and whistles on your property. Is this final or, or for the for the repairs that you said or? The repairs, that's definitely an estimate. So once I get my contractor here, we can really dial dial in that repair amount. 
I put an estimate of about 30,000. We could do less, obviously, or we can do more if we think it's going to net us more money on the property, All right? But this is to give you a rough idea of what you're looking at. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward um, to the next part of it. So the home selling timeline. So here's the thing is if we decide to move forward today and, and move with the platinum option, there's a couple of things we got to do. Number one is going to be the home repairs. And this could take anywhere from a week to four weeks, just depending on the scope of work. So once we get our contractor out here and we decide what we're going to do on the property, then we can figure out how long it's going to take to get the repairs done. But I put an estimate of anywhere from one to four weeks. Once the house is ready, we're going to start doing our marketing. This is where we do the video, the staging, the photos, all those different things. That could take one to two weeks, depending on the availability of the vendors. Um, then we get the property on the market. So if we did everything right, the property should sell pretty quick, as we have seen in your neighborhood. And that might take a week or two to get an offer accepted, you know, including all the negotiations and all those things that we do. And then from there, it might take anywhere from about 30 days, four weeks or so to six weeks at the latest to close escrow. So the quickest, let's say if we make sure we move everything fast, the soonest would probably be about six weeks to make all this happen. If there's more repairs, it could take a little bit longer, right? But six weeks to get your cash in hand. Um, how soon do you think you want your money in your hands and in the bank account? About six weeks sounds pretty good right now. Okay, awesome. So we'll definitely see what we can do to make that happen. Okay, so now moving on to um, a guarantee that we have with our service. Like I'd said earlier, uh, talking about our risk-free guarantee, what we don't want to do is a lot of other agents will lock you into a contract and you're forced to work with that agent even if they're not doing a good job. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen with you. If for some reason we're not doing our job and you decide we're just not the realtor for you or I'm not delivering on my promise, all I ask is you just call me. Let me know what we can do to fix it. If we can't fix it within a day, a couple of days, we will glad you uh, gladly let you out of the contract and you're free to go try with any other realtor. Um, if there's any expenses that were incurred, we would just have to take care of those, but we don't want to lock you into working with an agent that you're just not comfortable with, right? So that's our guarantee to you. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, awesome. So this is where I'm going for the close. Okay, so all we got to do today, Gio, to get started, it sounds like we're set on the platinum option. It sounds like you see the value in what we're doing. So there's a couple steps we got to do to get started. Number one is we got to review and sign our listing agreement. Once we do that, I'm going to set an appointment for our, our team to come out here to figure out exactly what game plan we're gonna do, what repairs we're gonna do. We'll come up with a timeline that works for you. And then we get started on executing this home selling plan, right? The repairs, the marketing, all those different things that we talked about. And then we just gotta get this property sold and get that cash in hand. So it's as, it's as easy as going through those steps. So I'm gonna pull out my listing agreement right here that I brought out. We'll just go ahead and go over it. And then I'm just gonna fast forward this part. So pretend I have a listing agreement right here. Oh. Um, so what I like to do with the listing agreements, I just like to explain everything first, page by page. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Mm -hmm. And once, you know, everything's clear to you, then we'll go ahead and sign and move forward. Okay, so this first page right here basically means this. Boom, boom, boom. And I just go through the bullet points. Um, is there any question on this first page, Gio? Does that all make sense? No. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, great. Second page right here, what this means is this. This means that. This means that. This means that. Any questions on this page? Okay, and I'll just basically go through all the pages. Okay, Gio, any questions overall about the listing agreement and the process? Okay, great. So uh, go ahead and just initial right here. And then all I do, I, I literally slide it forward to him, the listing agreement, and I put the pen in his hand. And I say, go ahead and initial right here. And I point to it and I put the pen in his hand. And then I just shut up, all right? You don't want to say anything because if you say something, you lose, right? Okay, go ahead and initial right here. If he has an objection, he will say the objection at that point. If he doesn't, he will just start initially. Your heart will probably be beating at that time, right? You're like, <laughs> all right? But you got to keep the straight face and you got to maintain that confidence, right? That confidence like, hey, this is business as usual. I do this every single day. I got my shit locked and loaded. As you can tell, I'm very well put together. You saw my presentation. That's my mindset, right? So go ahead and initial right here, Gio. Boom. Now he's initialing and I just flip the page. Go initial right there. Flip the page. You get to the last one. Okay, this one, go ahead and sign right there. Right? I'm not going to do anything crazy at that point. He just signed the listing agreement. I know I got a listing, right? But I still got to close this thing out. Okay, great. Awesome. So what I'm going to do, Gio, now, thanks for go ahead signing that. When I get back to my office, I'm going to scan a copy and send this over to you for your records. The next thing I got to do, like I said, is schedule a walkthrough with my team. When would it be a good day for my team to come out here and start walking the property? Um, Saturday. Saturday. Boom. Morning or afternoon? 
all right, morning, Saturday at 10 a.m. We'll be out here to start walking the property. Um, and then from there, we'll start putting all the whole plan in place. Uh, do you have any questions, Gio, about anything going forward? No, I'm excited. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, congratulations. I look forward to working with you. Shake your hand, yada, yada, yada. Let's make this happen. Let's get your property sold. Boom. That's how you close the listing presentation. Um, what did you notice? Correlation between the buyer presentation and the listing presentation. Same thing. You made it seem like, again, it's not a big deal. It's like, yeah, we're, we, we can sell your property, no problem. All we need is. I want, I want you guys to ask them. I mean, I know Kike, you have that question, but I want you guys to throw some rebuttal back, throw them some objection. I, th I think that'll be helpful mm -hmm. because, again, it, like, it, obviously he's role playing it, but if you guys are sitting here and you're saying, well, you know, what if they said this? Stick to Ricky to see how he responds. I'm going to put him on the hot seat. Put me on the hot seat. All right. Go, go. What would they go, say? Go. Go. So, I see that they would say what's more in that. Uh, what if, for whatever reason, you're not able to get that amount? Yeah, that's a great question, Francisco. Um, the thing with real estate, right? Obviously, we're going off of the data that we have, right? So we studied the market, we looked at the data, and this is what the data is telling us right now that there's a, a range in prices in your neighborhood. On the low end, for properties that haven't, that nothing's been done to them, their original condition, they're going for about a million. The ones that we saw just sold, there's one that just sold here on Main Street for 1.35. There's another one that's just sold for 1.3 two blocks over. And I actually called that listing agent and they got 12 offers on the, on the property. So I'm pretty confident based off my expertise that we can land somewhere in that range. Of course, I cannot guarantee anything in the market, but all we can go off is the data and what we're seeing happening in the market. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, great. Next. I have one. That, that we had, me and Blanca. So, so the one that we had with Blanca was, it was along the lines of, it wasn't, they were just hesitant to sign because they weren't going to net what they expected. Yeah. Right? And so I used the line that Rob uses and it was like, okay, so if we don't sell this house, what is your next, what, is your, what, what are you going to do? Yeah. What, what are your options? Yeah, that's what I would use. Right, Kiki. So it's like, right. And so to me, that was that was awesome because right away the light bulb went off on the wife's head. She's like, "No, we no, we need to sell. We yeah. might not be able to buy a new building." Right. So to me, that was a good technique that I picked up just from being in here with Rob, you know, coaching you guys. Yeah. Where yeah. It, it, uh, <laughs> for, for time, right, and and it was and and right away we got we got a pen pen to paper right there. So for for so, this is recorded, right? So for anybody yeah. watching, so, what Jason was saying is what if the client uh, is hesitant to sign? When someone's hesitant to sign, that just means they need more information or they need more reassurance, right? So if they've decided they wanna sell their house, then we wouldn't, if they haven't decided they wanna sell, then we wouldn't be doing a listing presentation, right? So that's where you as the agent, you have to ask all those questions up front before you go out there and try to present something. If they're just like, hey, we're not sure if we want to sell, we just kind of want to see more or less what our options are, then I'm not going to do a listing presentation yet, right? I'll give them some information. I'll give them some ranges. I'll give them some general information. But when I get to the listing presentation, that's because they've already said, yeah, we decided we want to sell. So that's number one, right? They're this so that, they may be interviewed at that point. Yeah, so yeah. that you don't want to put yourself in those situations where you just waste a bunch of time. Now, let's say you go into the listing presentation and then they're looking at the numbers and the numbers aren't what they thought they were going to be. Well, that's out of your control as well, right? And you would just want to empathize. Hey, uh, Gio, hey, I totally understand. Maybe this is, you're not going to net what you were expecting, but this is the reality of the market right now, right? Um, I don't think, uh, based off what you're telling me, it seems like you really need to sell because you've got to get out of this property and get into something that is more in line with your family, right? So let me ask you, like, if you don't sell this property, then is there a backup plan if you don't sell this property? No, I don't have any plan right now. Got it. And it sounds like you do need all the money from this property to invest into the new one, right? So if I were you, just my professional advice, if the numbers make sense, even with if the net's not as much as you thought, but you can still make it work and it still helps you accomplish this goal of selling and getting into the next property and you're comfortable with the payments and all that stuff makes sense, I would say you should move forward, right? I'd want to reassure you that that's the right move. Now, if you're going to put yourself in a bind or in a position where you can't afford the property, 
and it's just the numbers don't work for you, then I wouldn't want to sell your home and put you in that position. Is that fair? Okay. So what do you think? You think you can make these numbers work even yeah. with what I just showed you? Yeah, I can make it work. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and make it work. And trust me, I know it's important to get every dollar from this property. So I'm going to do my best to push, right? And who knows, maybe in the next, by the time we get your property ready, the market is trending upwards. Maybe those numbers will be a little bit more in your favor. But as of right now, this is where they're at. So let's let's keep the faith and try to push it forward. Cool. All right. Go ahead and sign right here. Just go ahead and initial. So what I did in that situation is I really try to empathize with them, right? And I took myself out of the agenda where, hey, if it doesn't make sense for you, then I wouldn't want to urge you to sell, right? You know, because at the end of the day, if someone's going to sell their property, it has to make sense, right? You can't control if it makes sense. Sometimes we think we can control that. You can't control. You are there to help them facilitate their goal, but you're not there to decide if their goal should happen or not. That's their personal choice, right? So all you can do is ask the questions, explore, play devil's advocate, right? Show them the pros and cons, and then ask the right question. Do you think you could still make it work if we netted you roughly around this amount, right? And if he says, yeah, all right, great. I think we should move forward. If he says no, well, hey, then maybe let's go talk to the loan officer and rerun the numbers, right? Before we even decide to move forward, let's make sure we get you the right information. I wouldn't want to move forward if you're not 100% sure. And then, so what does that tell the client when I do that? You're looking out for their best interest. Exactly. Right. I'm there to serve them, not to just get what I got to get a commission. I'm there only if it, if it works for them, then it works for me. Right. And you could even say that in your, in your appointment, literally, Hey, look at, if it doesn't make sense for you, it doesn't make sense for me. Right. Cause my reputation's on the line. And when you say that it's a really, really powerful statement because it immediately takes away like, Oh, you're just trying to close me and get a commission. Right immediately uh, switches you in the position where I'm on your side. I'm trying to help you achieve this goal, right? We're in this together. Any other questions? Objections. What other objections would, would you get during the listing presentation? What's your big I still objection? have another agent. I still have another agent to interview. Okay. Um, so I would ask more questions, right? Hey, Anne, I totally understand you have another agent to interview. Is there anything that I didn't cover here in my presentation that you think this other agent might cover? I'm not even sure I'm getting to start selling something, just seeing what everyone has to offer. Yeah, that, that actually makes sense, you know, and I, I would probably do the same thing. So I guess what I would want to figure out is just, just check off some of the points, right? Number one, do you feel confident that I have the ability to sell your home? Is that a yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think my track record supports that? Like based off my reviews, my track record, the homes that I've sold in the area, are you confident in my track record? Okay. What about the different service plans? Like do the service plans really like meet your needs? Like if we're able to do this and net you this amount of money, um, is that going to allow you to move forward to your the next step in your goal? Okay. Um, is there any, any other doubts that you may have from my presentation? Anything that maybe I didn't cover or clarify for you that are important to you? I mean, like I said, for the first time, I, I really didn't know what to expect. So I, from this perspective, it looks like you've covered a lot. Okay. And then side note, guys, keep in mind, I already asked all the right questions in the beginning, right? As part of my presentation, yeah. I already asked what's important to you, why, this and this and that. Um, okay. So Anna, you told me that it was in the beginning that it was really, really, and this, I'm going to pull her motivation out, right? You told me real, that was really, really important that you sold this property within the next two to three months because of the school situation and you wanted to get your kids into, into school, uh, you wanted to move during the summer so you can get them into school and start the school year, right? And to be honest with you, we're on a tight timeline right now because by the time we get your home prepped and all that stuff, the, the months will go by pretty fast. So you did tell me there was that sense of urgency. And so what I would like to reiterate with you is that it sounds like you're confident in my track record. It sounds like you like my service plan. It sounds like you and I hit it off. I mean, you know, you seem, you seem like a, an awesome person. Um, I'm here right now and I'm ready to go and I'm ready to make this happen for you. I can't speak for those other agents, but I know time is of the essence because we have the opportunity right now. So what I would say is let's move forward right now. Let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. I can actually have my contractor come out tomorrow so we can start identifying the repairs. Maybe even today if I catch them early enough and let's get you to uh, Hollister, back to Hollister. Um, <laughs> let's get you back, back to Hollister so your kids can start school uh, this next school year.
<laughs> what do you say? You ready to get the ball rolling? Honestly, Enrique, I, I still have that other agent. I really do want to interview. Okay. Okay. Here's another thing I could do, right? Because like I said, what makes me great is that um, I know how to move deals forward and I know how to get your home sold for top dollar, right? So what I can do for you, if you'd like, is we can secure our agreement. And what I'll do is I won't make this official until you meet with that other agent. So, because what I don't want to have to do is come back and get it signed and then we waste another day. So why don't we do this? Let's get this executed. Let's send a tentative appointment for my contractor to come out. When are you meeting with that other agent? In five, in five minutes okay so i gotta move quick so after that appointment give me a call and let me know if we're moving forward or not if we're not if we're not moving forward i'll rip the contract up if we are then i'll have my guy come out tomorrow at three like we had planned does that sound fair yeah. okay great go ahead and sign right here sure. so i just went in for it right i got nothing to, and i'm making it cool not a big deal she could have still said no and at that point i might have to back off right? But I'm at least going to try, right? I'm at least going to try um, and then see what happens, right? I have I lose nothing by trying because I already know the minute another agent comes in, they could potentially say, oh, I'll do it for less. I'll do all these other things. And now that puts more ideas into her mind. She just told me this is the first time she's trying to sell. That's my perspective. Rob, you have anything to add? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the last part was good. I've done that before. That, that's worked, right? So I think that uh, about getting it signed and then coming back, it's going to work. But it, I found, I found, uh, uh, if you pre preface it, preface, I think I'm saying the right word. In the beginning, really clear, right? Those questions should not pop up at the end. What I mean by that is, if you ask the questions, are you having, are you planning on interviewing other agents? You should know that, right? So one of the things that I end up saying in the beginning when I have these conversations with clients, that's first off, that's one of my questions. Are you working with another agent, right? Mm -hmm. But for interviewing with another agent. But the other thing that I tell them is I already preface them and saying, listen, Mr. Cuthbert, by the end of our conversation, it will be crystal, crystal clear if working with me or if working together is going to make sense or not, right? So I'm making it sound like, hey, listen, this is your op only opportunity to either make a decision if it's going to work or not. Right. If it's not crystal clear, then we need to go back and figure out what is not crystal clear in order for you to make that decision move forward. Right. Yeah. I think everything on the on the listing side, if you're able to say things in the beginning, like drop things in the beginning of your conversation, some of the questions that we're asking at the end, it's not really that big of a they really don't come up. Just that's why I asked. So I want you guys to see that there's different ways to look at this, right? It's really what your business practices are. I watched a, um, a listing training today with my buddy Wilson. He says he does not go for signature on the first appointment. He says he actually sells against that. And he uses that as his ammo. Hey, look, I'm not going to make you sign anything today because I don't believe in pressuring people and other agents will try to get you to sign today. What I want to do is I want to make sure you have all the right information before we move forward. He goes, so it sounds like we got to figure out what repairs we got to do. It sounds like you need to talk to your CPA to find out about taxes. Let me get you on the line. Let's make sure we do all that. And if it makes sense, then let's move forward. That's his angle, right? That's his angle. And it works. He sells a lot of listings, right? But you might talk to some other people that just get the signature on the first one. So it really depends on you kind of reading the client, reading the room, um, doing what Rob said also, finding out if, if they're interviewing other agents. There's some people that just don't sign on the first try, right? I would say a lot of mine, it's yeah, like 50-50, I mean, they right? Yeah. Like they don't sign on the first try. Because I've been with you, and they've used, that was an objection. I've never been with other agents. Yeah. yeah. And you did exactly that practice, though. You did try. You did exactly that. And then it got to a point that, like, we we, have, we already have it set up. We feel bad canceling. Right? That was a problem they never did. But it makes sense, guys. This is a big, big, like, like this is a big life event that's happening yeah. in life. It's just, it, to me, it would sound foolish of me as a real estate agent to pick the first guy that walks in. Yeah, right? especially if you're a first time home stuff, right? So it would only make sense. You have to put yourself in that position as well to know that, hey, listen, you know, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't hear too many agents picking it up on the first one. I'm not saying it's impossible. It yeah, is, it's possible. some of them you do, some of them you don't. It's, it's like a 50 50. You got to read the room and, and make your adjustments there. But I would say at least try because when yes. you try, it shows your ability to close and negotiate. And so if I'm a seller, I'm like, man, this guy's good, yeah. right? How's he going to be when he's negotiating my home, right? How's he going to be when he's battling for my my value on my property? Yeah. 
So even if you don't get the signature, it still does something. It sets the tone with like, I'm going with a guy who's like on his shit, right? Or a girl who's on their stuff. So it, it still adds points. It still adds brownie points to the conversation. If you're just a lay down, oh, okay, that's fine. Like there's no sense of urgency. Someone else is a little bit more aggressive on the second try. Okay, you met with that guy on the first one. They didn't try for the signature. I'm, you would not compare me. I'm going to go in for the signature. I have an advantage now at that point. Right. If somebody just make sure you understand that I'm the first guy you met with. I was just really relaxed. Didn't really go for the clothes. I meet with someone else. Then it's like the real me. And I go in for the clothes. Like I have the advantage now because now you're comparing the two. Right. So you got to read the room. I think you still got to try for the signature if you can, unless it absolutely like there's just too many questions in the air. But in this case, she said she wants to move. She likes the game plan. I already know it's urgent. It doesn't sound like there's really much more to discuss. It's more of like who she feels comfortable with, right? So, so then you can go in for the signature. I've never been told no to my face test. Yeah. Listening, but like, there's nobody that's ever said I'm not going to listen. Like I've never sat down and said after my presentation I'm not going to listen. There's always a process. It's always like, hey, listen, I'm not going to sign with you. That doesn't mean you did not get the you didn't get the listing assignment. Yeah. Or you didn't get the listing, right? There's still a process that a listing agent still has to do even after the meeting. But I've never, no one's ever said, no, I'm not listing you. Yeah. Right. So, so, so just remember that, guys. There's still a process. There's still a follow up process that has to happen. Right. And I, I, I'm a big believer that the biggest listings are getting caught up after. I had a listing. I remember this because you always remember the ones you lose, right? Uh, it was at Evergreen. It was right down the street from both of you guys' house. Uh, I nurtured this client, like door knocked them, nurtured them for like over two years, hit it off with them, had a good conversation, met them. They called me finally that they were thinking of listing their property. I had an awesome appointment with them, but I didn't go in for the close like I probably should have. They told me, yeah, we just need to talk to our CPAs, a couple little things, but we want to move forward. They basically gave me the verbal, right? So I'm thinking I just got to go back and sign. I get a call like a day or two later seeing that they were going with another agent. Did I lose you on that one? Oh, uh, no, you weren't. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was so pissed. But the reason they said they were going to go for another with another agent, um, it wasn't the commission. It wasn't anything. Their old agent who helped them buy like their other rental property who wasn't even from our area, but they had already worked with that agent uh, like 10 years ago, happened to call them, right, or find out that they were going to sell and met with them and closed them. And she basically said, you know what? You're, you've been awesome. I'm, I would recommend you to anybody, but we've just worked with her before and I just felt more comfortable because we've already worked with her, well, that, right? That. No, but <laughs> that other agent was nowhere in the picture. Even when I met with them, they weren't interviewing other, any other agent. This was like the agent that helped them 10 years ago. Yeah. And this agent wasn't even from our area. This agent was from like South San Francisco where they owned a rental property, right? Yeah. So it was like, Am I going to like lose that opportunity again? I'm going to try to go for the signature if I can. Right. Um, okay, guys, we're up on time. Hope you guys learned something today. Let me know if you need anything. What's up, Casey? Pretty good stuff.